What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. This is Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing man by the name of Jerry Yusko. Jerry, how are you, brother? It is an honor to have you on the podcast. Uh, I'm doing very well, Jay. Thank you for asking. You are an amazing man. So guys, uh, Jerry, let me give you his bio real quick, and then I'll tell you about my personal involvement with Jerry. So he is a lifetime of spiritual connection. Ever since he was a young man, he's been in touch with his gifts and connection with the spiritual realms. He has had many extraordinary out-of-body experiences that have enabled him to heal and awaken others in a profound way. He is a spirit whisperer and a gifted healer with a unique ability of empathy and sharp clairvoyance. He has skills that have enhanced his ability to see auras, read and scan holographic energy in the etheric field. He also has the ability to transcend time and space to see energy transference between people. Jerry also uses visualizations and angelic beings to assist in achieving physical health and emotional well-being. He removes interference, blockages, and implants from negative entities, including regressive ETs, during his healing sessions, he also clears and repairs chakras, including opening the third eye and activating the soul's DNA to help the body embody a higher vibration. Jerry is truly an amazing guy, an amazing person, guys. And I want to share, he did a reading for me uh, at a party about, what, two weeks ago, I think, from Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, knew nothing about me whatsoever, but read me probably, well, not probably, for sure, better than any person um, you know, empath, healer, intuitive that, and I've had many, um, that ever read me and, 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 and truthfully, uh, one of my, uh, spiritual mentors, Adele, who, you know, who was having the party that we met at, you know, has been working with me for since 2016. And she told me about you in 2019. And, you know, for whatever reason, I think COVID got in the way. Um, she said that there was a reason that you and I should connect and we should talk and stuff like that. So, as you know, everything happens in divine timing. So there was no, there was no reason for us to meet other than that exact time and place. And as I told you, I was going to have you come on the podcast. So I'm very blessed today to have you here. Uh, we have a lot of questions that we're going to go over, but you know, it's, well, really I'll just ask the first question because it's relevant to what is now. And by the way, for the marker today is Thursday, December 30th. So I wanted to get you in before the end of the year, which we've been able to do. I know I canceled on you one time. I appreciate you rescheduling. The first question for you and for us to talk about is the end game. What is it? What are we trying to achieve? Is it an individual personal journey or is it a collective human species journey? It's a really great question. And I'll go by my personal own growth and experience right now. I've been caught up in the mass media like everyone else when it comes to uh, world events What's happening around the world with government, um, the war that we just pulled out in Afghanistan after 20 years, all these different things. And then I've also been caught up in the metaphysical aspect of where people are going. 
And what I found out was there's just too much chaos for me. So I really thought about it. And then during my midnight or during my meditations at night, what I found out was for me personally, there's too much mind consciousness going around the planet right now. And if you're an empath or very sensitive or you have empathy for people, um, it can overwhelm your senses. It can overwhelm your state of mind of what's really important. And so for me, I had to pull out of the psyche of where the collective mindset is being manipulated, controlled, and uh, focused on upon right now, whether it be through media, whether it be through metaphysical people, politicians, or whatever. To me, I found out that there is a change coming for 2022. But here's the thing. It's not going to be what people think. I don't think, unless this is going around, there is a spiritual war, internal spiritual war, I'm finding out that's going on. And what I mean by that is we are going to have to make decisions based upon who we are as an individual of where we let the mindset of the uh, consciousness of the human race go. Now, you have two agendas from what I've seen. One is that which wishes to control, manipulate, and put fear into people. And it seems like it works really well. And then you have another group that is supposed to be really metaphysical and high-ended and spiritual that is supposed to help change the balance of uh, the collective mindset. The problem I saw was everyone has their own agenda on how to change the mindset of other people. And there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of wonderful and great things. Don't get me wrong. But I don't see the harmony of social changes happening as fast as what the other side is actually doing. I've already made decisions based upon my spiritual growth, where I am, and because I pulled out the consciousness of what I want to do about it, and how do I wish to help humanity as a whole? Because what I learned was there's a lot of people out there, and from what I can see of the future, there will be a point whereby People who are metaphysical will grow either one or two ways. They'll stay the same or they're actually going to grow in the, what I call not the Christ consciousness, but the Christ abilities, the master abilities of actually being able to walk into a lion's den and not get ripped apart, even if they right. have a pork chop around their uh, throat. And that basically is a representation of the media attacking people that come into the light saying, we have a bit different way. We can be heard as not only a grassroots movement, but as a serious movement to our new future. Right. Everyone is evolving at different levels. And that's why I look at it like in the metaphysical community, of which I come from, um, I never like the word woo woo. I, I take what I do very um, seriously. And it's my profession. Of course. So I don't like, the um, misrepresentation of what a person who's really here as their purpose to change um, the mindset of humanity. Right. And one of the things that I would like to do, and you can use my uh, email address, I used to go in the crowds and walk and heal people. I am going to start walking again this coming year for 2020. I would like to go to different hospitals and do geometrical um, symbols around them to send in energy. Nice, I have a great nice. gr grand pl uh, plan on how to do that. And then just let the results speak for theirself. Um, we need to start going out, in my opinion, for at least for me, 
and showing what we're really capable of doing. I know there are groups out there because I've been in them that will get on um, Zoom or some kind of program and they'll do mass healings. Right, right, right. But no one, but no one can verify the results. Well, well, let me ask you something about that. And that's awesome and, and uh, very altruistic of you. But uh, I want to get your read on it because you, obviously you've been out there and you've sensed people who have COVID and you've cured them, you know, through your energetic healing, intuitive gifts. But, you know, how many people, Jerry, because this is an important question right now, because obviously you and I were talking off the air. We're in very strange times. I mean, just when I met you, what, two weeks ago, a lot has shifted even since then. This is now like front and center um, in the conscious collective. As I told you, Monica and I were at Palm Desert yesterday and, you know, we don't wear masks and we don't buy into any of this mass hypnosis, psychosis, whatever you want to call it. But everywhere around us, it's all people we're talking about. So-and-so got it. What are we going to do? I want to ask you, is this now more of a, a hypnotic spell or a frequency that is obviously being purported and prom promulgated by the mass media to the point now where most people are creating this reality through the thoughts that they think is actually causing in them. Meaning are people just talking about this now so much and so much is in the common uh, conscious collective that it's becoming more than it really even was as a malicious or malevolent program. So what I really believe is if you promote someone long enough, even if it's a lie, it can become the truth. Right. And when you scare people, their immune system becomes reality. That's what you're saying. Perception becomes reality. Right. True. And then your immune system starts going down. Stress, um, everything that happens, uh, separation. Uh, only reason why I don't like wearing a mask is I don't like rebreathing my own um, carbon monoxide that I breathe right. into it. Right. And so any germs I'm putting into the mask, I'm breathing them back in, which in my opinion, this is only my opinion, can't be proven. But if you cough or anything else and then you breathe, that particles that we say that we don't want – Exactly. As a higher percentage of going back into your own lungs, we are supposed to be going through a spiritual revolution, and that's the war. It's it the war is going to be internal. It's right. It's not necessarily going to be external, but we are going to have to decide what side of the fence are we going to land on. Where are we going to be? Because in my opinion, the Christ-like abilities are going to be completely different than the Christ consciousness. The Christ consciousness is how we treat each other, how we wish to be respected. Um, it's the belief in that we can do the things that we claim. But a, a lot of people can claim a lot of things, and I've claimed, and I've seen healers that claim that they could heal, only to get sick. Right. Right. And right. the first thing I teach people is healer, heal thyself. Now, you can. If you take care of your body correctly, your immune system will definitely take care of itself. That's exactly right. The other thing about the COVID is they'll tell you the number that have died, but they don't tell you how many people have lived. <laughs> right, because it's designed to create fear. Right. So, like I said, I, I'm – Would if, if anyone would like to join me – um. They can go to my website, you know, I, I mean, not my website, but my email, I'm in touch seven at gmail.com. And we will go to a place and we will send in energy and we'll start doing because here again, this coming year is a miracle year of modalities, uh, gifts, um, and empowerment of one's own self in the aspect of being able to do, okay? I know I have healed people because I could see the aura change within them when I was walking, okay? That's awesome. I know that from other people, um, from some of the things I've done, they could see their results either immediately or they had to think about it because it was just 
overwhelming information. And it happened though, okay? I, I think that this COVID gives the opportunity for what we call people of the light or empowered people, the ability to actually go to the forefront and start healing people. And I'm the type of person that believes that if I'm truly spiritual, because I, I believe in faith, that I can go into the leopard colony just like Jesus and heal without being sick myself. If COVID is that new form of leprosy, then let's change the vibration of it like we claim that we can and start changing the mindset and the world to show the empowerment of what we can do instead of relying upon technology and questionable science of what they can do. There is a division in this world, okay? Not only of politics, but a mindset of spiritual uh, growth and everything. We're off track from 2012 from what I can see, but we're still in the ballpark of creating universal peace on this planet. Yeah. And yeah. believe me, if we can come out and we can start showing that we can go and heal COVID, heal cancer, heal these different things that we claim, science will look at metaphysical people in a brand new light. They'll have no Jerry, choice. Of course they will. I mean, look, the, my podcast, because I've been talking about these things for now two years. So I have advanced audience, much more advanced than most of the people that are out there on the internet. And I will say what you're saying that, and you, and I already know this and I told you this, but like, there isn't anything beyond right now, the metaphysical healers. Everything is about raising human consciousness. If you get to an awareness that you are not your physical body, that you are energy, like I call it plasmatic fire for people that want to see and touch and feel what I'm talking about. It would be the yellow orbs of ufology that people talk about that Jerry, you've seen, I've seen. Um, but to understand that you are energy again, vibrating particles, standing waves in the divine mind or of the divine mind separated only by will and intention, you will realize that nothing that you encapsulate with your physical body. Like you said, you know, you're not Jerry Yusko and I'm not Jay Campbell. I'm an energy being. You're an energy being. We're having a physical experience as spiritual energy beings that that's all that matters. We, we have to get more people if we're quantifying it to start realizing that consciousness is all that matters. That raising human consciousness, collectively understanding that we're all unified at a soul level. We are all unified through the indwelling presence of spirit, the Christ, the Christ of your own consciousness, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of different names for it, but this is what we have to get to from an awareness standpoint. We are not these bodies. All these people who are claiming they have this physiological disease or that physiological disease, how does a vibrating particle and standing wave have a disease? It does because at a physical level, it's in resistance to truth or to spiritual awareness. And when you're, when you're resistant to this spiritual awareness, again, metaphysical, uh, sorry that I use the word woo woo. You know, a lot of people just hear that word and they instantly like understand what it means, but I don't even know how to call this community. I think metaphysical is the best. That's the best classification. But at the end of the day, metaphysical is the only thing that matters now on this planet because you're right jerry we all have this ability to connect with each other through these you know special telepathic clairaudience clairsentience i mean all of these amazing multi-dimensional skills and talents and and, and 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 abilities that we have but we have forgotten you know in this viscous dense third dimensional experience. And so now it's about getting out of this third dimensional vibrational field and back into a fourth, fifth and sixth dimensional awareness where we all are unified at a soul consciousness level. And I, I mean, that's, this is all I talk about. And that's why you're here on this show today to talk about this stuff. And, and there are ways of doing it in my classes. I have taught, um, the one thing that all human beings have in common, and you're just doing it right now, it's the water. 
Exactly. If you understand how water affects water, okay, and memory of the water, and I've seen it, um, it's infinite. It goes back to the very beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the things I teach is you can put sound into water, vibrational uh, ancient uh, saphonotones. So if you were to put 528 into it and you were let it to resonate for a while and you're hearing it too, and then you drink the water, that water will change your uh, chemical structure, your molecular structure, your uh, electrons. And I know this happens because in class, I could see the aura changes in people. And if you can see auras, you will see that when you drink certain frequencies of water, when you uh, amplify it with different uh, vibrating tones, um, I think the master tone is 1000 for Jesus, um, nine, what, 969 or something like that for uh, the miracles of masters to come in and reconnection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what, 258, or no, 255 for repairing damage or organs and stuff. But it works. The question is, how much time are you willing to do it? Right. You see, right. that's what I mean. The difference between the Christ consciousness is you think, therefore, you think you can do. But you have to put work into everything because the body has to become into one alignment with it. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And, and so I was trained for a long time. Do you know anything about scalar waves? Absolutely. What I found out with, with my brain, at least, our brains can operate as scalar waves. We are because we are part of the universal evolution of um, creation. And therefore, if you take the time, remember how harp used to go off at one time and you hear these pictures at two, three in the morning. Uh, I don't hear them as much uh, or, if, or if they are playing. I don't, I'm not, I'm so tuned out to them. But I learned with almost any frequency, if you take the time to meditate or just tell yourself, if this sound is not for my best and highest good, let it dissipate so I cannot hear it anymore because this is my temple and nothing has the right to destroy my temple. And your temple is the creation of your physical flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can actually negate sounds. You can actually create uh, waves that will be 180 degrees out of sync to the wave that you're hearing and cancel it. And you can learn to train your body like the masters have. And it's more than just Jesus. It's Buddha, okay, Lady Nada, L Lanto, or Loto. Um, there's different masters that mastered over the physical body. And that is where I think we're going. Because once pharmaceutical companies realize that they cannot inundate you with um, false beliefs of, I guess, diseases. Um, if you never had to worry about cancer, if you never had to worry about tumors or being right. sick ever again, the business would drop off, believe me. Exactly. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, Join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up, and I'll see and talk to you soon. That's exactly right. And you can do that right now. Monica and I were talking about this this morning, driving in. If you create a conscious awareness that you are immune or impervious to COVID, again, mm -hmm. you are in recognition that at base essence, all you are is consciousness itself. Again, as standing waves, vibrating particles, energy. You cannot contract a disease that is not 
in effect, even real in the etheric realm, which is what we really at base essence are. We're not these physical bodies. So it becomes an invasion of your state of being, your, your sense of self. You know, it's the third dimensional self, the ego self that convinces you that you are physically diseased. I've got COVID. I, the rapid test and it said I was positive. I mean, I've had people, Jerry, call me in the last week who are good friends of mine and they know that, you know, I know a lot about this stuff and they'll be like, Hey man, I know you've told me this before and I know you've written articles about this, but uh, my wife just tested positive on the rapid test. And I'm like, well, is she sick? And then it'll be like, well, uh, that's a good question. Let me ask her. And then she'll say, well, I think I have a body ache. And so now you have begun the process of consciously choosing that as your state of being. I took the test. It said I was positive. So now, therefore, I am sick. And even if I'm not, I'll become sick because I believe it is so. I agree with you. Um, the other thing about the COVID test, it seems like I don't know how they test you. But if you get a cold, if you get the flu or anything else, right. it's going to be COVID. Right. Exactly. I mean, and the other thing is this um, virus mutates so quickly. Right. I never really heard of the flu mutating so quickly, uh, even when they came up with an antidote. Or I never heard of um, polio doing the same thing. In fact, we basically eradicated it, or the chicken pox. Um, the other thing about this disease, in, in my opinion, is the more people give it, uh, conscious energy of thought, the more powerful, like you were saying, it becomes. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why, like you were saying on your chart and stuff, we need to raise the consciousness up to, I'm not living in the fear of it. Right. Because I'm the one who is going out there destroying it. So, so, so to that point, I want to ask you a question. It's an important question. Maybe you have to read to get this answer because you're the guy to ask, but, but Jerry, so for the people right now who are so fear-based, who are so locked in their consciousness, and I don't have to describe them, but you know who they are. They're the people that are wearing two masks and a face shield in their car with the windows rolled up in a hot, sunny, bright day. They're literally now, they have been pushed consciously into down here. They're completely locked up. Are they, are they done? Meaning in this, time and space in the third dimension do they have a, do they still have a way to be because i call them in a way and again i'm not labeling them it's just a statement i call them captured consciously can these people get out or or is it or is it too late i mean i know it's an opinion question it's a tough question to ask but i mean a lot of these people captured for good okay when you first asked it the answer i heard was no the second way that you uh, phrased the question, yes, they can get out of it. Good. Here's the reason why. Because this is the time for the people that claim they're metaphysical, and there's a lot of aspects on this agenda right now, right. to start coming out and truly being teachers. Got it. Okay? But the only way that people are going to believe is you all you almost need to go into – uh, the lion's den. You almost need to go into uh, the leopard colony and come out unscathed. Right. You're talking about, because I know people like this, okay? They'll sit in a dark room with a double barrel shotgun because they're afraid that their shadow might give them uh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, the only darkness is the absence of light. But there's where their mindset is. Okay. I got it. And if they could see what I could do, because they're a person of science, show me and I'll believe you. Right. Otherwise, it's all conjecture. There needs to be a change within the consciousness, within the metaphysical community, in my opinion, 
I'm not trying to put a label to what we do and our names, but actually walking in unison and harmony of what we're able to do as far as curing, teaching, showing uh, people that are entrapped the light of what they can become. You do that, you will raise the consciousness because that's what the other side did. They lowered the conscious collective to a point of fear. Now, I was talking to someone about this on the weekend. If you really want to create a mindset, it's really simple to do it. Remember how the Buddhists went in and they lowered crime? There was a survey where they went into a community, the crime rate was high, right. they meditated, and that's all they did. Yep. The dark side, what I've been shown is COVID is not just an American thing. It's worldwide. Right. Now, imagine, I'm going to go on to something that takes away for a moment, but the war against the Dracos, the reptilian, and like that, that's been resolved. The war we're fighting now is that of the darkness of the demonic beings that are here, the witches, um, the dark ones, okay, and stuff like that. The negative in influence of, if you want to call them the Illuminati or right. whatever. The parasitic energies, let's, let's just call them that. Okay, but they're great because imagine you have the world and in every spot of the world, you actually have people where they sit around and they send out negative vibrations right. to make a worldwide uh, collective thought. Right. So around the world, you're having in every single country, basically, a hundred people just meditating, sending out negative energy accumulating across the globe. Right. And you can amplify that. You can amplify that too. If you know how to do it, I'm not going to say how to do it, but there are ways to amplify negative energy. And this is where I look at it in some ways, the medical, the metaphysical community needs to wake up and start counteracting that energy. And I know they have because I've been on programs, I've seen people, but the best way of doing it is coming out of the the darkness and going into the public domain and showing the empowerment of what we truly can do. I know people that would love to be able to stand um, in front of people and heal a million people at one time if that's what they could truly do. And there, there are people, I met this Russian guy at one time, well, more than one person, and that's what they would do. They would go into groups of people and send out vibrational healing, and people could feel the healing or they wouldn't. But we need to start doing this on a more larger group. I mean, I know when the weather was good and stuff, I, I would have like maybe eight or ten people show up, and we would walk through and just send out healing energy without telling anyone. I think that if we were to do more of that in true public instead of uh, on Zoom or Skype or on the Internet, we'd have a more, uh, a more of a grassroots movement right. that actually shows that we're not woo-woo. We actually do care. You know, there's no guarantees on anything. But just the fact that we put our collective consciousness together to counter the negative energy within the world is very powerful. Yep. And, right. and I know tech and I know techniques that we don't need to be everywhere in the world, but if we were, that'd be great. But you, we can set up grid patterns around the world uh, in physical and well in a 2D aspect of it and still send energy. Mm -hmm. What I find amazing about the UF, I mean, not the UF, the metaphysical community, we can heal someone half a world away, but sometimes we can't heal the person right in front of us. Right, right. 
that needs to change. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let me ask you a question. You gave me uh, some amazing questions and I'm definitely not letting you off this podcast before we answer these. Uh, but the difference between believing we are God's and being part of God's creation. Now, let me preface that with the great consciousness authors, spiritual uh, gurus, sages, even the great spiritual texts talk about discovering the I am presence, learning the I am presence, understanding what the indwelling presence is. You know, I like to call it the Christ of our own consciousness. Again, the higher self, you work with people's higher selves. But that question is a great question because the Abrahamic teachings get people confused and, and they externalize, quote unquote, God. And they oftentimes place him in a chalice, you know, on a golden throne with a trident and a beard and a long flowing white robe. But what is the difference? I mean, again, it's an amazing question. It's believing that we are gods versus being part of God's creation. Well, to me, during my meditations and everything, I realized one thing. I can explore the universe through my mind and remote view to different places and see things. But I realized I was not the creator of what I was viewing. Right. Okay. But if I was God, I should be able to create the universe after my own image. <laughs> I can't. I do not know one person who's ever claimed to create, to self create their own self. Most of us came from parents. Mm -hmm. In that aspect, we are God in the aspect of image and creation that we can explore the universe. God does not keep any secrets from us, good, bad, or indifferent, I found out. The other thing I found out about God from my experience is he keeps things really simple. I've had, it feels like in my mind, I've had conversations with him to make it really difficult. <laughs> and he would ask me, why do you want it to be so difficult? <laughs> right. And, and the thing is, is here's the reason why we're part of God, in my opinion. Because if you go back to the book of Genesis, God picked up dust and blew into it. Now, going back to why we wear masks and everything is because supposedly when we blow out our breath, everything that we are is within the breath, our DNA, our molecules, you know, whatever it may be. Yep. So inherently we are part of God in the aspect that what we are, it's physical beings in the creation of that moment of creation. Okay. And so I am limited to what I can truly do. It doesn't mean that I can't uh, go beyond the expectations of what it means to be human, because that part is a part of God. Like you said, we are energy, but understanding that energy for most people, whether they be metaphysical or not, and even science don't know all the answers. Yep. Is in my opinion, um, a very challenging thing for a 3D mind to comprehend. <laughs> but it's very simple for a spirit of universal connection to grasp. Exactly. A multidimensional awareness. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. Once I started relieving the fact that I lived in a duality... And the more I try to become in a singularity of understanding the universe uh, and the energy of it and how I, and this is the main thing, how can I take the energy of the universe, transcend it through my body to become into the highest expectation of a spiritual living being? And once you get that, it's kind of like where the, um, the yogis find nirvana, uh, the mask, the Hindu find, um, uh, I forget what they call it, but their true spot of heaven. Oh, Samadhi. 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 Yeah, okay. 
And then, but all, but there's different races around the world that have found the higher consciousness to um, the universe. Right. And that is what we're capable of doing. That's what I mean. Beautiful. I can have the thoughts of a three-dimensional being with the spiritual understanding of limitations as uh, far as what my physical body can do. Right, right. But I've learned something through in this la- in this lifetime, and I talked to you about it before, I think. I found out that when you start becoming a master, you teach the physical body how to embrace the energy of what is and not what we're told we cannot do. Right. Okay. And so here again, I'm building a transcended body into the future. So when I'm born, I will be like that of a Noah or Christ type like person in the aspect. I won't have to relearn everything to get to where I'm at now. Sure. Sure. And so I look at, you as in spirit you are of god in 3d flesh you are a spirit of ever-growing change nice and that's what i mean by that statement i am i am a part of god but i am not god because i cannot create my own self hey guys and gals what's going on if you're looking to use peptides make sure you go to my number one source limitless life nootropics for healing with bpc 157 and tb 500 or fat loss with ipamorelin cgc 1295 and aod 9604 to immunity with ta1 thymus and alpha 1 limitless labs a huge selection Go to limitlesslifenootropics.com and use my code j15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. How can we elevate ourselves from the collective consciousness, which is very fear-based and chaotic at the moment, to where we stay in resonance, but at the same time, send love and resonance and light divinity, whatever you want to call it, to the folks that are, you know, unfortunately in the fear-based consciousness. Like, how do we do that? How do we, meaning, you know, everyone like you and I, you know, walking this path of understanding the awareness that consciousness is all that we are and all that matters, how do we collectively stay perched and still help the people that are in fear? I need to ask you a question before I can answer the question. Please do. What do you believe your higher self is? My higher self is God. Part Which of God. Is, okay. In that matter, hold on a moment, Father. Okay, I, I asked you. I asked you a question, and I just basically show me where you're at right at the moment, and you showed me the archer. Uh, I think it's the archer. archer. Is yeah, oh. I remember uh, the one that has the bow and all like that, and yeah, sure, sure. you're directly hitting the spots and stuff like that. Uh, in power, uh, right on target. Okay, I'm going to answer the question for myself. Because I pulled out the human consciousness because I wanted to go on my own spiritual growth. One of the things I don't do is I don't pay attention to the media. Right. I learn I learned that the media will write headlines that are that have trigger words in them. That's exactly right. If it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> Okay. True. Uh, the other thing that I learned, though, was that's on the media. Now, the metaphysical side. The way I look at the metaphysical side, it's more convoluted, in my opinion, 
than the media because the media has a particular agenda. They know their target audience. They are well organized. They know how to go after the people they're searching for. The metaphysical community, in my opinion, is mostly all over the map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm going to put this, I'm going to say it from my point of view. I like it. I don't read anyone's material. And yet when I have spoke to different people, they'll go, oh, do you know such and such? Like I read their material. And no, I never have read their material. Jerry, you mean you don't read David Wilcock every day? I'm just kidding. No, I don't. I know who he is. <laughs> or Corey Goodman or anyone else. I mean. <laughs> it's Corey Good, by the way. <laughs> oh, Corey Good. Okay. <laughs> See, I didn't, didn't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't either. Oh, Lord. Okay. But I don't, I do it for a reason. I, if you're really truly in contact with your higher self, you already know all the answers to all the questions that can never be asked. I know that sounds strange, but the reason why is because if you are a creation of the universe, then you are as old as the universe. Mm -hmm. And everything that transpired to make the universe what it was and is, you indirectly know it because you're connected to it. Okay. Yeah. You're an immortal being. It's the idea of remembering. I, I, I know people don't like this, but I don't channel and I don't download. I reconnect and I become. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't learn. I do. But I learn from, I would call it the masters, from um, different alien races, from my spiritual guides, from archangels, and also from my own self. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason why I don't really like reading is because I don't want to get confused from what I know and what other people may know exactly what I know. But then there's other people that speculate on what is without really knowing if it is. Right. And that's right. what I don't want to get. I don't want to get in the politics of. Sure. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. Well, for me, my awareness to that is you can read till you're blue in the face, but it's not until you actually start doing, which is obviously the mindful training, the mindfulness training, however you have that, whether it's meditation, contemplation, introspection, sitting in nature and silence, again, achieving that stillness um, where all the answers are given to you, right? It's not thinking, it's receiving it's downloading it's a knowing it's a cosmic awareness where you've gotten to a place where god your higher self just gives you the answer because as you know as a immortal spiritual being you have you know incarnated into this third dimensional you know plane of existence which is you know devoid of the answers <laughs> devoid of the awareness and the knowing that you had as a perfect spiritual being with all the awareness that you would need, you know, a, a full, you know, quantum computer of the Akashic records. So, you know, you, that's where the answers come and you don't get them from reading books. I mean, I'm a big reader and I am a prolific reader. And I used to always think that, you know, Jerry, that if I, the more I read, I would finally get the answers. And it was like, you do realize that you are, as you just said, you're being contaminated not intentionally, but by other people's thoughts and other people's beliefs and other people's, you know, opinions. And so all of that is very sensory and can become, uh, how do I say it? You can be, your mind can be contaminated with untruth or opinions that are not, you know, real and, and, and not truth. And so, you know, I always say this, and again, this is my opinion. I always say that it does take a pure heart. And you get a pure heart from spending a lot of time in silence, a lot of time in stillness, you know, becoming and cultivating the awareness of being or whatever, the light of being, 
which is a one a, a love of all life, a sentient a light a, a, a desire to harmonize with all of life, a oneness, unity. And that's where discernment will come in. And again, this is just part of that work. It's just automatic. It flows in. There is no thinking. There is no doing. It's just being. It's the getting. It's receiving. It's like a download. It's like a consciousness stream that you have. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. Um, before we get off on subject though, reading is a wonderful thing to do, to read other people's thoughts, especially if they can verify what you already know. I just don't, I personally just don't read a lot of other people's materials. I'm not saying don't do it. Sure. So here's my question for you. Could you keep using the word download? And yet you claim you're God or you're connected to it. Why does God need to download anything that he, that he doesn't know? Then exactly. why would you, then why would you being in the format of a God say download? I just use the word download to, to, to annotate or to simulate or to just as an expression of receiving the information. But the, the word itself, download, is an, uh, a term for a computer, an AI. And I'm not an AI by any means right. of, the, of the imagination. Words are very powerful. And if sure. you start going back to the Aramaic and uh, stuff like that, the ancient languages, they had power in them, okay? Mm -hmm. They're manifesting in power. In order to empower yourself, the words you choose to use, I found out, are the words of how you reconnect back into source. Good point. If you use the word download, you're saying to me, that's the way I hear it, okay? Sure. I am a being I am a being, I am a being that is a worthy of being able to receive information that I've already known. Okay, when you remember it or you reconnect to it, it's like saying, I laid down my book for a moment and now I'm going to pick up and read where I left off. You're not downloading the book. You're just, in my opinion, all you're really doing is reconnecting to the information of that which you already knew. I agree with it that. Makes it makes a big difference in how you honor your own self creation or you not your own self creation, but the moment of life of what we're living right now as a spiritual being. I don't like using computer terms. I don't like using right. um, any terms that devalue what I am as a physical creation of the universe. But I also will say to you, I'm not disagreeing with you. I I I will say to you, I in 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 uh, semantics, you're right. But from a standpoint of common colloquialisms and words that we use to defer meaning to a specific thing, because yes, I am anti transhumanism. I am anti AI. I am anti technology. But for me, when I say the word, I receive a download, that is spirit coming into my consciousness and giving that information. Now, again, I understand where you're coming from and you're saying be careful because that is a polluted word that has probably been used to invert, has been inverted against us. And I agree with that 100%. And yes, words are very powerful. So I would say that if there's a lesson here, I need to tighten up my word language, my conscious word languaging. I'm going to, I'm going to go one more on you. Okay. Okay. Download has also been referred to what people that have can, that had um, extraterrestrial contact, they will use the word download. Got it. Yeah. That wouldn't be me. I, I mean, not that I can consciously recall, but no, I'm with you. And I always go back to this guy who says God does have, has no purpose to channel. <laughs> And he doesn't because he's already the information. Exactly. So, so see, here's the thing. If if you claim one thing, you can't negate it by making a negativity toward it. Sure. 
and I know that we get in thematic of words and all like that, and I shouldn't be so. Um, no, it's good. You have to be about it. But I look at true empowerment comes from the words that we choose mm-hmm. to use to empower ourselves with. Like, this is a really big one. You can't say, I think I can heal you. Because you right. never will be able to. Because that's true. Because you're never you're thinking you can do it instead of you're doing it. Yeah. Right. You have to be, you know you can do it because the faith of what you are has already created it for you. That's exactly. To become. Right. Just like you can't say try, could, should, would, hope. You have to state it in the present tense. Like, you know, the great Neville Goddard always said, claim it. So when you say I am abundant and prosperous instead of I will become or I want to be, you're creating that reality right now in the present now moment. Yes. And this is where we hopefully will change because in this new world of uh, uncertainty. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) It, for lack of saying anything else, uncertainty is exactly 2022. I really believe the people of good heart and, and metaphysical um, insight and empowerment can really change this world. Agreed. But I think the difference is going to be it's going to be on a worldwide global um, aspect and not just um, – a division of countries doing their own thing. And that will become because the individual will learn to come into their own enlightenment to be able to stand with each other and make a power of light around the world, just like the darkness did. Right. And so the way I look at it, and people would like to, Email me at I'm in touch seven at gmail.com and would like to walk with me um, doing something that would be fantastic. Okay. Because starting next year, I'm going to do it anyway, because that's my empowerment of where I've seen myself going. Um, there, like I said, there is a difference between the Christ consciousness of I think I can and the Christ abilities of knowing I can do. And there are a lot of good people out there, okay? And you're one of them that's been helping change in this world. I would really love to see, as far as 2022 goes, 2022, um, the veil of darkness becoming less and less and less mm-hmm. because our light. yes. And it's because the people that have no fear actually teach, like you said, the lower uh, people of fear, how much empowered they truly are. Exactly. Because the one thing I've learned through almost any type of government that suppresses its people. They do it through fear, but they start out by teaching the young, this is the way things are. And if we're growing up in a society where wearing masks are common, uh, doing a mandate, which is not even law, is common, just because our... um, a person of authority at the time said, this is what we're going to do. If you teach young people to follow and obey command, by the time they get to be 2021, that's all they'll know. That's pretty much where we're at right now, Jerry. It needs to change to show how powerful we are. So we don't need to live in a world of command because we can live in a world of empowerment. Beautiful. It's it's amazing what you just said. I mean, having young kids in my house myself and seeing 
what what is happening. I mean, I don't even want to go into that to a whole nother podcast, but yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you hundred percent. Um it's up to the true teachers, the 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 aware beings that understand the value of raising human consciousness to raise the collective human consciousness to now to do the work, to show up, to be there in resonance, you know, transmuting dissonance. And, you know, I'm, I, I mean, just say the word, brother, I'm happy to be with you and, you know, bring more people with us again, like us. And it doesn't take just people of our awareness. It takes anyone who has a will and intent, you know, to transmute the darkness, like you said, to overcome the negative frequency, the fear vibration. And honestly, dude, it has to go that way because there are just too many people right now who are hopelessly locked up in fear. And can't, you know, again, you know, this is very simple. You know, the laws of quantum physics, you know, show that, you know, it's the, what is it, the Heisenberg principle that like that which is observed is what is created. So, you you know, you have all these people locked in fear, keeping all the other people like them that they're again, like attracts like they're commiserating. It's the crabs in a bucket. They are locked in fear themselves. So you're right. It takes people not in fear in resonance around them to lift them up. It's literally the whole, you know, conscious metaphysical standpoint of it takes, you know, a, 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 what is it? A, 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 an entire flock to lift all of the people around the flock. Which brings me back to the very first question you asked me. Is the end game a soul journey of self-discovery are a human consciousness of collective um, for the human species. I will say this in my meditations and, and learning and stuff, I learned what it meant to be my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. And in truth, I am my brother's keeper in truth. We're all our brother's keeper to one degree or another. Okay. The reason why is because society depends on farmers to grow food and the farmers depend on truck drivers to be able to deliver to the stores. And so even though we don't look at it like that is a brother keeper type of thing, indirectly it is. The other thing, when we're all babies, that baby depends upon you, even though we do it out of love and everything else, to protect it, care for it, and everything else, you have children, even though you don't look like you're their brother's keeper, you are indirectly until they get the mindset of going off on their own. Right. But even then, you still will be. Now, here's the thing. I am my brother's keeper, but it, I am not in servitude or slave to my brother. Mm -hmm. The other thing I can choose, what I do and don't do. Right. Okay. And so my brother cannot guilt trip me into doing something that might be harmful to them or to myself or to society as a whole. I need to, as a brother's keeper, I also need to be responsible not only to myself, but to the awakening of, of other people and their own growth. Okay. But I don't, but I want, let me clarify something because it's a both question and no. I want to be responsible enough so those who wish to learn, the ones in the red, they elevate. Sure. And they truly wish to learn, then I would be there for them like any other person of a metaphysical who can teach as a teacher or a master or whatever would be there for them. Beautiful. But I will not have them because of their fear, drag me down to their yeah. level so right. they feel comfortable. That's the difference. That's beautiful. And I'll, I'll just add to that and then we'll end. There's a difference between empathy and sympathy. Yes. <laughs> Very well stated. Very well stated. Right. And that's the problem, Jerry. Most people... Because they do have well, they're well intentioned. They do want to get in the energy field down here and sympathize, and then boom, they're knocked out of 
whatever resonant, hopefully they were in resonance or whatever, again, higher energy field that they were holding on to. And they're now hope, not hopelessly, but they're in that energy field. Whereas if you empathize, you hold your energy field and you surround them in a bubble of light and love and good intention. And that you hope, you know, hope from an energy standpoint that they will find their way out. And obviously you are helping them by giving them your energy, which will help to transmute their dissonant field of energy. But yes, it's, that is the master's work. The master's work is not sympathizing, but always empathizing through compassion and um, intent, positive intent, loving intent. I agree with you. You're very well spoken, by the way. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Well, I mean, when I talk to people like you all the day, all, all, all the time, I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> Jerry, man, I appreciate you doing this podcast with me today. I told you that it was going to be profound, and now you know that it was profound because you and I consciously intended and manifested it to happen. And I tell people this every day, that if you consciously manifest what it is that you desire – that you will create that reality. Uh, now, obviously, you have to have words, thoughts, and actions around it, right? So your words, as you said to me and pointed out to me, should be conscious, your thoughts focused, and your actions massively loving and intentional. If you do all three of those things around the reality that you intend to create, it's more times than not, if not all the time, that you will create that very reality. Yes. By the way, do you teach? Only if I, if you watch my podcast. I mean, I have lots <laughs> of people that watch my podcast, so they would say uh, that I do. I do teach uh, on health optimization, hormone optimization, uh, all of that stuff. But I, I have not started teaching on this. But yes, this is, I, as I told you, this is my purpose and passion and mission for sure. And I will say, and you already know this. <laughs> <laughs> that I did in past lifetimes, of course, right? So now I'm refinding myself and I will eventually do this. In fact, I told Monica yesterday when I was in Palm Desert, we were walking uh, through Palm Desert. It was beautiful that I wanted to create a class or a course with her about raising your vibration and how to actually do that. So uh, yes, Jerry, I will eventually get back to that um, that awareness of doing it. I mean, yes, I've been teaching for a long time, but not in the metaphysical space like I would like to, but that's definitely what I'm going to ultimately do. You make a great teacher. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I received that. And that coming from you is a huge compliment. So thank you from my heart to your heart. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. I really enjoyed this. Thank you no, so much. Me too. me too. And again, you know, Love to Adele who set this up and told us three yeah. years ago. She's the true bridger of light, <laughs> a child of the light. So if you guys want to work with Jerry, and I highly recommend that you do. And by the way, I know uh, uh, Rebecca already worked with you and she was like, you're right. She said some amazing things. So guys, go to empowermentofoneness.com. You can also find Jerry at Facebook, Soul Spirit Essence, facebook.com forward slash and then he has a YouTube channel, which you guys can see there below. Um, Jerry, do you want to give out your email address for them to also book sessions with you as well? Um, just go to I'm in touch seven at gmail.com. That's I M T O U C H the numeral seven at gmail.com. I am in touch number seven. Not number seven, but just the number seven at gmail.com. Yes. Beautiful. And I would right. really love to talk with some people and start healing, not just the um, COVID situation, but start changing the whole vibrational energy of this new coming year to make it what we want instead of what it has been. Beautiful. And Jerry, you will be having a lot of people coming. I, I will tell you guys this again. Jerry read me better than any intuitive or empathic person that I've worked with, at least in this incarnation and this time and space. Uh, I'm probably going to do some more work with him because I know he can help me. There's a lot of uh, stuck 
energy fields between me and my mom and dad, most likely. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. He also did a reading on Monica and Monica said it was profound. And I've already had a couple of people that I know already go to him and they've also said the same thing. So I highly recommend that you work with Jerry, get a reading done or even more, uh, look to work with him at a coaching level. So Jerry, again, man, honored that you were on the show here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, being accommodating for a couple of the time changes. Uh, you're an amazing human being. So guys, go to empowermentofoneness.com. Check out Jerry on Facebook, Soul Spirit Essence. And then I am in touch seven at gmail.com. Send him an email. Um, remember guys, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon. Happy New Year. When this runs, it'll be already 2022. So let's make 2022 the most resonant yet. Yeah. Thank you so much. You have a lovely evening. Thank you. You too.